pasa? What's up? Antonio Serrano here, and today I have a magical show just for you. In this case, I'm going to be talking about my comfortable show. What do I mean by, about comfortable show? Comfortable show is basically a show that you can take anywhere and that you feel very comfortable performing. There are not a lot of props, a lot of moving parts, things that you have to be changing from show to show. Yeah, it's basically that, a comfortable show. Something very important to keep in mind is that uh, a comfortable show is not going to be the same thing for different magicians. For example, for me, a comfortable show is a show where I don't have a lot of props and a lot of things to pay attention and I don't have a lot of body loads, okay? That makes me uh, way comfortable. When I have things in the case, I put the case on top of a table and the show is ready to start. That makes me way comfortable, more comfortable than having to be putting things on top, folding things, um, loading things on different pockets, on the belt, on the back, okay? So that for me is comfortable. Uh, and I don't care, I don't care having tricks, for example, that require some level of skills, like uh, car manipulation, like um, ropes, like sponge balls or things like that. Other magicians maybe are the opposite. Maybe some magicians feel comfortable feel comfortable having to set a lot of props and a lot of things and then when they are on stage they feel comfortable because they don't have to use uh, difficult uh, slides, difficult skills, okay? That could be right. I feel extremely comfortable having three ropes inside of the case and having to do things from Tabari rope, um, Richard Sanders fiber optics, Dario rope routine and things like that. Maybe another magician would feel scared to death to be in front of a crowd with only three pieces of rope and he prefers to have like 12 silks, a change bag, a hat for the kid, two or three comedy ones and he has to pack a lot of things but when he's on stage he feels extremely comfortable because he knows exactly what he has to do. So you must find your own definition of comfortable show. I have here in my phone different ways to understand comfort in a show. For example, you can have a comfortable packing, a show that is comfortable to pack. Maybe it's not comfortable to set, maybe it's not comfortable to load or not comfortable to perform, but could be comfortable to pack. Um, also, you can have a show that is comfortable to perform, a show that you are very comfortable performing because you know exactly what you have to do, you don't have to be thinking about a lot of stuff, doing math inside your head and stuff, it's comfortable to perform. That's another way of comfort in a show. Also, comfortable resetting. There are certain periods of time in the year where you have, when you have a lot of shows, when maybe comfortable, uh, being comfortable performing or being comfortable packing is not as important as being comfortable resetting because you have a lot of shows back to back. So that's another way of comfort. And the last type of comfort could be comfortable traveling. Maybe you have a show with a lot of things, very difficult to, uh, to reset, uh, with a lot of slides, a lot, a lot of things to, uh, to think about in the show, very difficult to perform, but it travels quite nicely. So that's great, a show that is comfortable traveling. This show that I'm going to show you right now ticks all of the boxes. For me, it's a show that is comfortable to pack, comfortable to set, comfortable to perform, comfortable to reset, and comfortable to travel with. Okay, so without further ado, I'm going to go uh, through the show. Most of the tricks that I'm going to show you are tricks that I already mentioned, so it's going to be quite quickly, quite quick. And as I mentioned before, I love doing these exercises. This show is a show that I never perform in front of a live audience because I don't have the need to be that comfortable when I perform around. But you never know when you're going to find a situation where you need a comfortable show. The last thing that I'm going to be talking about before going uh, through the show is that having a comfortable show is not bad, right? Sometimes we feel like if we are playing like the basic game, like we are keeping it simple, very few props, few tricks, um, simple slides, um, not a lot to reset, not a lot of things to change from show to show, like paper, fruit, things like that, we think that we are not doing um, our best. And we could, we could be doing our best simply with a deck of cards. Like for example, Juan Tamariz, simply a deck of cards, a couple of things, um, bits and pieces, and you have a great show. So it's quite simple. Having a comfortable show is great if you need something to go anywhere and be sure that you are going to be amazing. 
no matter the, cir the circumstances. Maybe you need a comfortable show because it's the first time that you're going to be performing and you don't want to feel scared, so you need something that you are completely sure that is going to work. So I think it's a great start and a great thing to have in your tools, in your toolkit, in your toolbox as a professional. A show that you can go anywhere with it and it's going to kill, okay? Because remember, the tricks are important, obviously, the tricks are important, but you are more important always than the tricks, okay? So it's all about you. These tricks could be simple uh, because of the props, there are very few props, quite simple, but the reaction of the audience are, are great, even greater than with, with other tricks that I have with eight, nine, ten props, right, in them. So let's get started. Uh, this is my old case, and as you can see, the case is almost empty. Very little, very little things, so the sponge balls are rolling over. I only have things here, um, jumbo cards in here, and this could be perfectly put inside of a um, shopping bag, inside of an envelope even. It's a quite, quite small show, comfortable show. I would start, I have the set list in here because I don't even have a set list for this show because I never perform it. So uh, I would start with my balloon sequence. I would do some gags with balloons, I would do the cut and restore balloon with the scissors, the uh, thumb tip, um, some balloons that I have inside of here, and as I always mention, this bag is a, is a, not a change bag, it's a neck bag, so I have one more routine in there if I wanted to, uh, even though this is not a Malini style egg bag, which is the one that I like using the best, and then I have a little sponge poo, to do the um, gags with the dog and the dog playing dead and then I can do the um, balloon swallow so I have like maybe around 10 minutes of entertainment just with this bag full of balloons and these three little items the thumb tip, the scissors and the little poop right here so this could be the routine that has been with me for the longest amount of time and it always kills. It's something that I can have in my pocket and there is a lot of magic because simply the cut and restore balloon is quite clean and you can have audience participation in there and the balloon swallow is one of the biggest effects that I perform anywhere in any of my shows so a great start for a show. Then I will go with my triumph routine which is what I call the shuffle of the funny guy and I talk about the differences of a funny guy and a funny guy, okay? In Spanish it will be gracioso, that's the way we pronounce it here in the southern of Spain. Um, you only need a deck of cards. <laughs> Someone chooses a card, it is mixed, and I, I talk about different ways of shuffling cards and how funny people always try to catch you because they think they are very funny and they, I do the triumph. And it's a very funny routine, that's the last line that I use, and this is funny routine, but I am not a funny guy, basically and you only need a deck of cards, so it's a surefire routine, it plays to a lot of people um, because the cards are not like uh, something that you have to identify but more like, um, like a means to tell the story, let's put it that way and something that I always use when I do this story for a lot of people is to force a card that is going to be recognizable from a long distance, for example the Ace of Hearts or the Ace of Spades, those are cards that if you show them, even in the largest theater, they can recognize that card from far away, okay? And if you use a bigger deck, like for example a Phoenix Parlor deck, it works even better with the names because they are very big spot cards, okay? Great, great trick in here. Then, having the deck, we can go to the Jumbo Aces from Simon Lovell, one of my favorite routines. This looks extremely big in a theater and you use the same deck to force a car. I sometimes, uh, I have performed these two routines in cabaret shows, sometimes I force uh, one car, maybe the ace, if I want for people to see it properly, if I don't have to force a car because it's a very small venue, I have a free selection and then I force the uh, jack of hearts in this case, which is the car that I'm going to make appear in the middle of the aces, and then I first do the triumph with that car and then I do the Jumbo Oasis with the other car. So it looks like one routine made up of two big chunks in them, okay? Quite interesting. Then I would go to my Uncle Ramon sequence with this little bundle here. And as you can see, I love having things packed in an, in, in an unit. And this is why I call this my comfortable show. In the uh, balloon sequence, I have a lot of things. I must carry at least 10 or 12 balloons. 
uh, long balloons and round balloons, the thumb tip, the scissors, and the um, poo. But everything is inside this bag. So when I am looking uh, in my case and I'm checking that everything is inside, I see this bag and I'm like, balloons, okay, that's done. I don't have to be looking at things one by one. Um, then when we go to the triumph routine, the deck, okay, it's done. The jumbo aces, the jumbo aces are done. I need the deck, but the deck is already checked because of the previous trick, okay? So there are only one thing, like one bundle of things. Then the ropes, instead of having three ropes dancing around, they are all tied up in a bundle, in a silk. I need the silk for the routine, obviously. But uh, it's only one thing, and that's something that I love about shows. And I try to do this in all of my shows, even if they are not comfortable shows. Sometimes it's very difficult to do because if I am doing a lot of shows back to back, I don't want to have things all inside of a bag, and for me to set the trick, I have to take one of the things, put it in this pocket, take one of the things, put it in the collapsible box, take one of the things, put it in the case. If I need things in a particular place, I think it's better to have those, thing, those things already in that place, even before I arrive to the venue, in the case. It's a pain in the butt when you have to check that everything is there. Okay, this trick, this, this, this is here, this is here, this is here, this is in the pocket. But the, the reset and the setup of the effect is quicker. But every time that I can put things in a tight bundle and I only have to care about one thing per routine, I love that. That's great. So, uh, then we go to the sponge ball routine. And in this routine, quite simple, I only need four sponge balls. And it is basically um, Pat Page, Patrick Page, sponge ball, classic sponge ball routine. It is great and you can do it to a big audience, it's great, a great routine. Sometimes I do it with one person, with one kid, sometimes I do it with two grown-ups, and it's extremely funny. And I add in here, because people only get to see three sponge balls of, of the four, I add in here David McCreary's uh, sponge ball Monty, and you need a couple of squeakers, one that works and one that doesn't. And this is a very important tip that I should add. I, I took these squeakers, I don't even buy squeakers in magic uh, stores. I buy um, dog toys made of plush, like a plush toy, and I remove this from inside. And I keep the toy if I have to make a present or something like that. Uh, and they don't look like a dog toy because I remove the little, the little thing from inside. Or to, do, um, or to do a show and I want to give a present to the kid, I give the plush toy as a present and I keep the goodie. I keep this quicker. So, um, very important to have in mind. I remember performing close-up magic and I did this gag using the sponge bunnies and I was like, oh look, um, it sounds, oh no, it's in my hand. You do the change and now you pretend that this is the one that sounds and it isn't, it's this one. And when I hand this one to the kid, and that's the misdirection, to ditch this one inside of your, of your pocket, um, what I had at the beginning was a squeaker with no um, with no whistle. I don't know how you call the thing that goes inside. So when the kid play it, it doesn't sound. And when he looked, he was like, there is no whistle. You remove it. The kid thought that when I hand him the squeaker, I remove the part that sounds. So what I have now, I'm getting closer. This one is the one that sounds. And you can see that the, the whistle there is inside. And this one is the one that doesn't sound, and you can see that it also has something inside. The only thing that I remove is the little flat piece of plastic that is the thing that vibrates to create the sound, okay? So, at plain sight, they are completely the same thing, okay? They cannot go like, oh, you remove the thing, no, because they look exactly the same apart from the sound, okay? So this is a great routine. Four sponge balls, a couple of squeakers, it's golden. It would be great if I take these six things, four balls and two squeakers, and I place them inside of a bag. But it makes no sense because before the show, before the show even starts, I have to take uh, two sponge balls and place two and two in each of my side pockets together with the squeakers. So if I have to do that, I think it's better to have them already loose in the case and be able to place them inside of, inside of my pockets as quick as that. I don't care about the silk, because this is part of the routine, and I show this to the crowd like this in the show, and I don't care about the bag, because exactly the same thing, I pull out the bag to perform the, ball, uh, the balloon sequence. So, um, I love things in a bundle, if it makes sense for the, for the show, okay? Then we go to the I Hate Kids from Steve Borgatze. It is great, a small 
plastic bag to make sure that the leather of the wallets is going to um, be in a good shape for a lot of years. And this is everything you need, three wallets. You need some bills and some funny things for the kid to win. And this is basically like a bank night, three wallets. You ask a kid on stage, the kid chooses one of the wallets. Inside maybe there is like a small coin or a piece of paper that says you want a balloon figure, which is something that I do most of the times. And in the other two wallets, there are large denomination bills, like a 20 euro bill, a 50 euro bill, something like that. Quite interesting routine. The only thing that you need is this, and it's extremely, extremely funny. And it is great to do um, after the sponge balls. Like I do the sponge balls, and if I do the sponge ball with a kid, them doing this is great, extremely funny. And it gives me an excuse to hand the kid a balloon figure and then show the gag, show the gag, because he's, this trick is like a very big gag in the middle of a magic trick, right? So then we go to the envelopes. I already talked about this trick. Uh, four envelopes, that's everything that you need. For me, this is considered a bundle. They are not inside of anything, but they always go together. And this pocket is great to keep the envelopes inside. And this is basically a trick to go in front of any um, um, card sequence, okay? I have inside of these envelopes a uh, um, sheet of paper of the same color of the envelope and um, there is written in the piece of paper the name of a trick. For example, juggling, babies, uh, making money rain, um, naked levitation or stuff like that. And people start eliminating envelopes and the last envelope that remains is, is the trick that we are going to perform and the last envelope says a uh, card trick, okay? And I perform a card trick. It's once again very funny, very magical, I thought that this trick was going to be like a gag, like people say, oh, that's very funny, but people truly are mesmerized every time that they see this, because most people think that you have like an, like an extra piece of paper that you move from one envelope to envelope that says card trick, but when they see that the piece of paper has the same color, they are completely blown away, okay? And I love the handling that I have for this because I saw videos of me doing this trick previously and I went like this and then take out the paper and now I love the handling that I have, quite simple and I am resetting at the same time that I am performing the trick, so great, I, I love this effect. And then we go to the invisible drunk. For the invisible drunk routine I just need a small envelope with an uh, invisible deck inside. I talk about this in my show number two, that's right. And um, I love this, um, this trick. Um, it says mysterious in the back, and this is basically like a seven, eight minute stand-up routine, finishing with the um, invisible deck revela revelation at the end. Nothing to lose, nothing to break, outstanding effect, because in, in invisible deck is quite difficult to, um, to make better. And as I did before, the triumph routine and the jumbo oasis, the envelopes gave me the perfect excuse to do one more card trick, and that's great. And to finish, I do my cards across sequence, sequence, which is for me the best closer for a comfortable show. The only thing that you need is a deck of cards, that's everything you need, a deck of cards, and you ask a couple of volunteers on stage with you, and you create a riot, like ev everyone is going to be screaming, laughing their heads off, like having the time of, of their life and you simply are using this little deck of cards. I could make the trick, the trick play bigger using costumes and music and lightings and a net to count the, the cards inside and I would do that without question if I am performing this show, but for now I want to show um, the show at its basic form and this would be it. So guys, as I mentioned, don't be ashamed for having a comfortable show because this is great. This is a great show to have in a very small case or bag inside of your car if you are traveling anywhere or anything like that or going to a party and knowing that you have like a 45-50 minute show to create a great time for everyone. So yeah, that those are my thoughts for a comfortable magic show. I would love to know what you think about it. So please, let's, let's, um, let's comment something below, if you mind, if you think it's fine. Subscribe, that would be great. And guys, I would see you, as always, in a near future. Bye there.